Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Healthy New Zealand podcast. And my guest today is my friend, Bart Kay, who doesn't need any introduction to any of you. We've done a few podcasts together. And I think many of you um, watch his various sites. So thanks for coming again, Bart. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, the reason I really wanted to talk to you today was about these new guidelines that have come out from the New Zealand Heart Foundation or reinforcing their old guidelines, really. And I've been working through their references and making a few little short clips about those. But I'd love your expert opinion on their position statement and then perhaps having a look at why did they choose some of the references they've got, which have nothing to do with actually red meat in the heart and, and heart health so mm, mm. yeah if you'd like to have a look Absolutely. at that that would be fantastic you bet well what i thought i would do sue is um bring up this document can you can you see that now Yep, that's fantastic there Thank we you. go okay so here's here's the new zealand heart foundation position statement on um, on red meat consumption I guess this, this is this is an organization that people know and for some reason rightly or wrongly and spoiler boys and girls it's wrongly they trust this organization and yeah I, I, I just read through this position statement as a scientist, as a nutritional scientist, as a physiological scientist of some standing, I, I was aghast. I was, I, was, I was so amazed to read this position statement because the quality of the statement in terms of its scientific veracity is frankly completely substandard. It is absolutely appalling from start to finish. This is the worst, most pseudoscientific bunch of crack pottery that I have seen in many, many moons, Sue. And um, and that's saying something. Anyway, we'll read through it and I'll speak to it. And if there are questions and things, fire them and, and we can keep it reasonably conversational because I, I don't sort of want to give a lecture here so much, but I will have a few things to say. All right, so can red meat be included as part of a healthy diet? Published on the 27th of October this year, 2020. And it says, the Heart Foundation today released new recommendations. New recommendations, they say. That's a laugh, isn't it, Sue? These are actually their old yeah, recommendations. Sure These are their old recommendations, reinforced, rehashed, um, republished without little hindrance or indeed alteration from their old ones, despite all empirical evidence to the contrary, actually. Anyway, the Heart Foundation today released new recommendations on how much red meat and chicken New Zealanders should be eating as part of a healthy or heart healthy diet. Mm, good. Well, let's see how heart healthy the Heart Foundation is, shall we? Okay, lovely picture of some red meat there. Probably slightly overdone, isn't it, Sue? Yeah, almost. <laughs> yeah, goodness me. We can't be having that, can we? <laughs> anyway, that's not the point. Here's the point. The latest evidence shows eating high levels of red meat can increase the risk of heart disease and stroke. Dirt. False. No, it doesn't. That is a lie. That is not even an error. That is not a, a misinterpretation. That is a complete ball-faced lie. There is no evidence anywhere in the scientific peer-reviewed literature that suggests any such thing. None at all. And I just I just want to point out, I've been having a look at their references yep. for red meat specifically, and not yep. one of their references mm -hmm. makes that claim. They all Correct. say there's either really low level evidence, poor quality evidence, or no association was found whatsoever. Correct. And that is the overall synthesis of all the, the see the thing is even even all those studies you're talking about Sue, and you're quite right with what you say they all talk about very poor levels of evidence very very low level evidence or indeed no evidence all of those studies are associative 
they associate this factor with that factor. They do not establish causality. They are not clinical trials. The reason being because the only way to do an experiment or the only way to, to establish causality is to do an experiment, which is interventional. What that means is if you're going to follow the scientific process, the scientific discipline, you have to get sets of genetically identical twins. You have to separate them at birth. You have to put them in a locked metabolic ward and keep them there for their entire lives. You have to control every aspect of their lives exactly and precisely, except for the amount of red meat they're eating. Now that's never gonna happen, is it? It's completely yeah. infeasible to do such a study. So what nutritional scientists do is they start compromising on the scientific discipline, the requirements of an experimental empirical proof for, for a concept. And they start throwing the rules out the window. And then you get to the absolute bottom of the pile, the absolute bottom feeders of nutritional science. And I, I give it that because nutrition science is a misnomer, so it does not exist. There is no such animal. It's not science. There is no, nutritional it's ideology. All, is it? No, it's not. Absolutely, there is nutritional yeah. ideology out there, but there is no nutrition science. It's nonsense. Anyway, the bottom feeders of the nutrition science community are epidemiologists. They're not even scientists. These are people that correct, correct, lady, that too. They collect uh, associations between factors A and B, and then they turn around and say that A causes B. Well, and I just want to point out that they use relative risk as well. Just I just because then they yep. um, exaggerate their claims yep. by using relative risk. So you yep. get this big headline saying forty five percent of people, yep. and in one of their studies, it was an increase from you know one point five to one point seven percent. Like you know. But 45% of people. Yep. So exactly. Anyway, so, sorry, I just thought that's right. No, no, you're absolutely right. And we'll we'll get we'll get to that in the very next paragraph. But um for 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 this paragraph, we're dealing with epidemiologists being bottom feeders and not scientists. Yep. Not only do they use relative rather than absolute outcome statistics, but they lie about that too. <laughs> they use they use a process that they call or, or, or a procedure that they call adjustment. This data was adjusted for blah, 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 or this, that, and the other thing. Well, hang on a minute. A scientist makes observations and does statistical analysis on the observations they have made. A scientist doesn't yeah. make observations, throw the observations they've made out the window, make up some observations and comment on those. It's, it's ridiculous. I cannot believe they get away with this and call it science. Anyway, so there we go. The, the short and skinny of all of this is their first sentence says, the latest evidence shows that eating high levels of red meat can increase the risk of heart disease and stroke. No, it doesn't. There is no evidence of that existent anywhere in the literature. That is a lie. That is an ideologically driven lie. It is a financially driven lie. Look up who funds the Heart Foundation, boys and girls. You'll be very interested when you find out where the money comes from. Follow the money. Anywho, there is there is all of that. Um, and I, right. I don't know if it's correct, but someone messaged me and told me that they thought Dave Munro was a vegan. And, you know, I, I don't have any evidence to say that he is, but I was wondering if I should actually try and follow up on that. Um, That'd be interesting to know for what it's worth. Tell us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, yeah. if he's a vegan, he'll tell you within five seconds. They can't help themselves. Mm. Hello, I'm Dave and I'm a vegan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it won't be hard to yeah, find out. Yeah. They're like, they're, like, um, they're like CrossFitters and cyclists. They have to tell you within five seconds they're a vegan or a cyclist or a CrossFitter. Imagine if someone was all three, Sue. Goodness me. <laughs> which, which, which one comes out first? I don't know. 
Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Research shows eating less than 350 grams of unprocessed red meat a week can reduce the risk. No, it doesn't. That's another lie. Risk infers causality. It infers mechanistic connection. If you eat less red meat, then your risk will reduce. No. Associative studies cannot establish causality. I'll give you an example. The prevalence, the number of shark attacks on swimmers is correlated very strongly with the sale of ice creams at the beach. Therefore, if we want to reduce the number of people attacked by sharks, what we need to do is litigate against the sale of ice cream. The logic is no better than that. That's what's going yeah. on here. Forget and it, I just it's ridiculous. Go I on. just want to point out to the um, listeners that you and I did quite a long um, discussion. We've got a podcast somewhere on epidemiology. If they want to go and learn a little bit more about that, and yep. you went through quite carefully all those confounding risks and, and um, all the biases and things. So, yeah, just remind people they can go and check that out if they want to. Right. So the first two sentences, both complete ball faced lies. So that's their entire, their entire rest of their statement hinges on those two statements, both of which are demonstrably incorrect, both of which are demonstrably invalid, both of which are demonstrably um, untruthful. Great, good start, New Zealand Heart Foundation. Okay, it was found that each additional 100 grams of red meat eaten per day was associated with a 15% higher risk of heart disease and a 12% higher risk of stroke. Okay, two points. Number one, associative. So the, the word risk is completely inappropriate because risk implies mechanistic connection. It implies if you intervene, if you eat less meat, that will change your odds of developing either of those conditions. And that has not been established by the science. That is also not true. Secondly, 15% and 12%. Those are what Sue was talking about. Those are relative changes in risk, not absolute changes. Let me give you an example of that. If we had a population that was studied for association that had a million persons in it, so we've got a million persons on a low red meat diet and a million persons who are their match pairs, which they don't even usually do properly, who are eating a higher red meat diet than the other crowd. So our control group are the low red meat eaters and our experimental group, THE, are the high red meat eaters, a million in each population. Good. Okay. So if we had one person in the low red meat eating group who developed uh, heart disease, sorry, cancer. No, heart disease is what we're talking about first there yeah. for the 15%. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we had one person who got heart disease out of that million people in the low red meat eaters. In the other group, the, the million high red eaters, we, we would probably also have one because you would need to, to study several, several million to get to the point where you could say, well, actually what we had in the red meat, the high red meat eating group is 1.15 persons per million. Mm. And if we did that, we could say we had a 15% change in the risk because the difference between one out of a million and 1.15 out of a million is 15% change in risk, relative. However, what's the yeah. actual difference in risk? And it's not even risk, it's association. But what was the actual change? Yeah. It was 0.15 per million persons. That's, well, I'm not going to stop eating red meat on that basis. No, that's, that's, that's so small as a signal that it's within the noise, the error, 
around the, the, mm. they'll say oh, it's highly statistically significant which means the sample size was big enough that yeah. a tiny tiny change is unlikely to be due to chance alone and then they use the word significant which is a statistical statement to yeah. infer that the findings were worthwhile to any given individual they are not it's nonsense so a 15% change and a 12% change relative risk is nothing. It has no value I, to any person. Go on. I have a question here about this too, because they yep. say for each additional 100 grams of red meat eaten per day associated yep. with 15%. Yep. So if you're eating um, 100 grams of red meat every single day like what's the time frame for this like is this over 30 years or 50 years or we would need yeah we would need term? to look at we would need to look at the study to see what their follow-up period was because that's you know i mean that's such a um confusing statement really it, well know, that's what I, it's designed what, to be so it's designed to confuse people it's designed purely as a fear-mongering statistic to scare people into not eating meat well the way it reads here is like every time you eat you know that extra 100 grams of meat your risk is going to increase by 15 percent i mean we'll oh all yeah be it'll, dead it'll kill you two by, weeks we'll from tomorrow be, i know we'll be dead by the end of the week i'll That's be it. dead by the end of the day you know? I'd, I'd have been i'd have been um, dead years ago sue personally if it was true. <laughs> spoiler boys and girls okay. it's not true it's nonsense okay uh, the review of the latest science also showed it's more heart healthy when red meat is replaced with other plant-based options. Oh, again, I want to get into this one. Wow. Again, simply not true. There is yeah. no evidence whatsoever to support that claim. And I think that answers your question as to whether Dave Munro is a vegetard. Mm. I think you'll find he's a vagoon of the highest order. Because only the goons would write a statement like that and sign off on it. Yeah. That is absolute nonsense. There is no evidence mm -hmm. for that anywhere in the literature. For a start, science doesn't say what is more heart healthy. Science does numbers. And there's no number reported there whatsoever. Yep. Neither is there a reference to any peer-reviewed study actually anywhere in the statement. Not one. Interesting, no. isn't it? Mm. But you wanted to talk about your, your thoughts and feelings on the plant-based options for heart health. Well, it seems to me what they've done here is in the next statement, they really um, talk about it a bit more is because cholesterol levels come down, they make this enormous jump that reduced cholesterol levels is going to be healthier for your heart. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, I think that's a fear that the public have about eating yeah. red meat. They see their cholesterol may rise yeah. and um, become really concerned that that's dangerous. And yeah. I'd really like to delve into that a little bit, if you don't mind, because, you know, sure. that's a real misconception that needs to be dealt with. Yeah, I, I can deal with that. I mean, the, the TLDR or Reader's Digest version of that is this. Cholesterol does not cause heart disease, period. Cholesterol is not even a risk factor for heart disease, period. What your doctor tells you about cholesterol is nonsense, period. Done. We're finished with it. I am. I have, <laughs> look, if people want to know about cholesterol, the science behind cholesterol on my YouTube channel, my main YouTube channel, uh, the one that is above my head to the left there with the gold insignia, go and look that up. There's a, there's a playlist on that channel. And there are well over 30 videos. There are many, many hours of actually science-based analysis of this entire cholesterol issue there under that playlist. I explain it absolutely in full there. But yep. the take-home right. message is cholesterol does not cause heart disease. Cholesterol is, is not a, a risk factor. Mm. I mean, this is another example of of appalling so-called science by yeah. the New Zealand Heart Foundation. Yes, it is. Trying to make this association that eating plant-based proteins will lower your cholesterol, therefore lower your heart disease risk. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's just and nonsense. They've 
Oh, and they've ignored all the other aspects, you know, like the increased calorie content, the gut diet, you know, the digestive issues and gut upsets, yep. and the lack of availability of the protein from the plants, not yep. to mention all the other other nutrient nutrient deficiencies. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> yes. I'll let you, so I'll let you carry on. You so we'll read that statement out. It says red meat can certainly be part of a healthy diet. Well, that's a big. Uh, that's a big admission. But replacing red meat with alternatives such as beans, chickpeas, soy, and nuts has been shown to reduce cholesterol levels, which is true. A key risk factor for heart disease, which is not true. It is not. Says Dave. Dave the Vagoon. We suspect. Okay, good. Um, so no, Dave, cholesterol is not a risk factor for heart disease. Cholesterol does not cause heart disease. Lowering your cholesterol is actually contraindicated, not indicated. It is a dangerous thing to lower your cholesterol. It is a bad idea. You should not lower your cholesterol under any circumstances. No. Okay. Um, the review found that chicken was neutral for heart health. In other words, they found no result there meaning it doesn't necessarily do harm, but also that it doesn't have the benefits that some of the plant-based options have. No, they don't. There is no evidence that plant-based options have any benefits at all. So uh, another lie, exactly. another lie. Good. Okay. While chicken is another important protein source in the New Zealand diet, we need to have a variety of options in a heart healthy diet and include beans, chickpeas, chickpeas nuts, seeds, and fish. Why? Why? All foods that have been shown to help prevent heart disease. No, they haven't. Lie. Absolute lie. Notice how many references to back that statement up have been cited after that sentence, uh, you know, before the full stop there, Sue. <laughs> All foods that have been shown to help prevent heart disease. Where are the references that back that up? I'll tell you where they are. They don't exist. That's why they're not cited. Mm. Nonsense, New Zealand Heart Foundation. Hang your heads in shame. Disband your criminally misanthropic organization. Sit down and shut up. You are ridiculous misanthropist crackpots. There you go. Um, heart disease is New Zealand's single biggest killer. That's true. The update of position statements. The update, you mean your rehashing of your existing one. The update of position statements like this one is part of our ongoing commitment to supporting Kiwis to improve their nutrition. No, it isn't. It's part of your ongoing commitment to help make your sponsors happy. It's about your bottom right-hand corner. That's what it is. Uh, help prevent heart disease. Well, then, if you want to help prevent heart disease, talk about some science, because you're not doing here, New Zealand Heart Foundation, not at all. Uh, and improve the quality of life for the 170,000 New Zealanders living with heart disease, says Dave the Vagoon. Well, Dave, give yourself an uppercut, go back to school, learn some science, take some advice from someone who understands some science, because the science you're reading, the science that you're reading, is ideology. It's not science at all. Complete, complete nonsense. Okay, processed meats such as ham and sausages were not included in this review as there is already substantial evidence linking processed meat intake with colorectal cancer. There is some evidence linking okay. those factors, but it's not convincing. Absolutely, processed meat is potentially problematic, but the evidence on that to this point is not remotely convincing. So again, they've got that wrong as well. Uh, the review of evidence And then was, we have this gone. issue. Mm. Sorry, I was going to say, and then we have this issue of them saying, don't eat red meat, processed mm. meat is a problem, but mm. eat, our, eat our fake plant-based meat. Yep. I mean, where's the logic in that? There isn't any. Isn't that, going to be a, isn't that going to be a problem as well? Yes, it is. There isn't any logic. It's about the bottom right-hand corner of the sponsors who want exactly. to sell you soy-based slop. Yeah, exactly. Was it? Okay. Uh, the review of the evidence was supported by the Heart Foundation's Expert Nutrition Group, THE. <laughs> That's a laugh. Uh, which include members from the University of Auckland and the University of Otago. Well, what do you do? The key findings were considered in the light of the New Zealand population. Are, are we glowing? 
do we do we do we issue forth photons in the visible wavelength sue is this is this a new thing that no one's told me about are we fundamentally different from our australian counterparts our american counterparts and our british counterparts no i don't think so anyway uh, and went through a comprehensive peer review process well that's also a laugh i've been involved as, as a peer reviewer myself uh, you know, I've both published articles as an author and I've also reviewed articles as a peer reviewer and I can tell you what a comprehensive peer review looks like. <laughs> no, oh dear idea. Oh peer review uh, veracity is a fallacy, boys and girls. Anyone who tells you that anything that is peer reviewed is therefore full of truth, light and, and goodness, you're kidding yourself. You're absolutely, you're a fool if you believe peer review confers any kind of veracity on any kind of statement made in the scientific or indeed the pseudo-scientific literature. Okay. Um, the new Heart Foundation position statement, which is the old one, uh, is also consistent with advice from the World Cancer Research Fund. So, appeal to authority fallacy. And Australian Heart Foundation on meat and pot. Again, another appeal to authority. So, and references here, none. Well, if we have a look at that position statement, where it says download the position statement, oh, yeah, and there are that. some there are some references at the bottom of that, and you know, in this position statement, they talk about the fact that they take into account the environment and uh -huh. um, you know other concerns, which I really question in light of of are those of concern when we're talking about red meat and heart health yeah those are different issues and then when you look at these references i mean they keep referencing themselves for a start right um Good. yep and you know if you have a quick look through there you'll see that there's a lot of plant um and food research yeah. references and reference yeah. number 16 belinda fete uh, 17 she had a look at that one um yeah. which was food frontier life health foods yeah. um you know which is exactly what you say about big corporate interests um yeah. with a huge agenda so yeah i don't know if you want to have a any comments on the references there well let's just run through them quickly here okay the national heart foundation of new zealand so they're citing themselves there dietary patterns and the heart background paper Okay, so that'll be another one of their ridiculous, nonsensical, pseudoscientific crackpot statements based on no kind of evidence at all. The Ministry of Health Mortality 2017 data tables. Okay, so that's just the reports of people dying for whatever reason in New Zealand in 2017. No problem. Um, cost of coronary heart disease in New Zealand. Okay, it's expensive. We know that. There's no problem there. International Agency for Research on Cancer. Um, IARC monographs for the evolution of carcinogenic risks. Okay, so that's using associative data to produce mammograms to predict the outcome for any one given individual on the basis of association across the population. Completely inappropriate, absolute nonsense, pseudoscience and crack pottery. So let's cross that one out as, as, as valid. And it, and it has no relationship to red meat and heart disease. I mean... Right, even though it says that in the title. So important that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, diet, nutrition, physical activity, and cancer a global perspective, a summary of the third expert. Okay, so expert opinion. So, on their so called hierarchy of evidence, that's right down the bottom. It's, it's opinion. So, we're not interested in people's opinions. We're interested in hard scientific empirical evidence. So, we can cross that one out. Um, Red and processed meat consumption and risk of incident coronary heart disease, stroke, and diabetes mellitus. But I've seen that study. I've 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 spoken about that study quite extensively yep. on my own channel, and I can tell you that they made many, many methodological errors, including assessing red meat and processed meat together in the same basket. Um, and they found and they found no association as well. Correct, they found was, an association with with processed meat, but they found no association with red meat. Correct. So I the association they found with red yep. meat was zero. 
the association with processed yeah. meat was one of those tiny little insignificant makes no difference to any one human being over a 100 life year 100 year lifespan things yeah. it's statistically yeah. significant but meaningfully completely useless so forget that one yeah. cross that one out as well uh, animal source protein meat and poultry and heart health and evidence check rapid review brokered by the Sachs Institute for the National Heart Foundation of Australia. So that's a review article. In other words, it is a synthesis. It is an opinion of other people's studies. It's not an experimental study. Its value is therefore nothing. It's an opinion. So cross that one out. National Heart and Foundation. They're basic, and they're basically referencing themselves again as well. You know, right. like okay. all of these, they're all referencing themselves. Number eight is another reference to the National Heart Foundation of New Zealand. Again, red meat and poultry, an evidence-based nutrition statement. Well, we've seen how evidence-based the New Zealand Heart Foundation <laughs> is already in this discussion. So well, let's just cross that one out. Forget it. Um, number nine, the New Zealand Institute for Plant and Food Research Limited, Ministry of Health, New Zealand Food Composition Database. Well, that's just telling us what the analysis of foods has shown that foods contain what to do so that's nothing to do with red meat particularly uh nutritional composition of meat that's another look at that well okay fine um effects of pasture and high concentrate diets on the performance of beef cattle carcass composition and equal growth rates and the fatty acid composition of beef good nothing to do with eating red meat or not uh, eating the activity guidelines Eating and Activity Guidelines for New Zealand Adults, Ministry of Health, again, a position statement, not science. Uh, National Heart Foundation of Australia, again, an opinion, forget it. Um, University of Otago and Ministry of Health, a focus on nutrition, key findings of the New Zealand Adult Nutrition Survey. Well, that's just asking people what they eat, uh, believing people when they tell the researchers what they eat and writing it down. Good. So forget that one as well. Um, New Zealand Nutrition Foundation, AUT, that's the University of Auckland, the Auckland University of Technology is what that is for those who don't know. Uh, the Bayer Foods Project preliminary results. So that tells us nothing about anything. Um, number 17, um, Food Frontier, Life Health Foods, Hungry for Plant-Based, the New Zealand Consumer Insights, an opinion looks like pretty much what people said they want to eat. Okay. Um, OECD FAO, OECD FAO Agricultural Outlook 2019 to 2028, Rome, OECD Publishing, Paris Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. A forward projection. Well, we all know how good the United Nations have been at forward projections on any matter, so we can forget that one too. Uh, we could go on all day here, couldn't we, Sue? It looks like this list oh, of references is absolute gut rot. It's absolute nonsense from start to finish and not a single bit of science in it. None at all. What a shock. <sighs> there were probably six, either six or seven studies that actually related to red meat and not one single one of them found... Mm um any um association they all just said no association or really low level evidence and yet the heart foundation still stick with this policy and they still quote those studies as part of their position paper it's yeah. unbelievable it's unacceptable as i said it before that organization that organization should shut its doors it should stop talking to the public on any matter of science there should be a, at the very least there should be a clean out of the house heads need to roll this is this is totally unacceptable criminal misanthropy mm. there you go mm. it is it is completely and you know we we need people to just start standing up and fighting back against this and just completely ignoring it 